Today on Passion for Food, we make one of the hidden gems of South Africa, this amazing Malva pudding. I remember one of my favorite things about my time growing up in South Africa were all of the amazing foods, and this is no exception. This Malva pudding really is so good, I feel like everybody in the world should give this a try. It's like a kind of apricot bread pudding soaked in the most amazing sweet cream syrup. And topped with a little fresh custard or ice cream, this really becomes pretty irresistible. The only downside is we might be putting our waistline into a little bit of jeopardy here. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and get started. Assembling our dry ingredients, starting with one cup of all-purpose flour, along with one cup of sugar, one tablespoon of bicarbonate of soda, aka baking soda, and just a small pinch of salt. And while we give this a quick mix just to knock out any lumps, let's take a moment to talk about this Malva pudding recipe. The recipe we're using today is considered the gold standard, and it's credited to Maggie Pepler. Maggie always loved to cook, and in the mid-1970s, she went to work at the Lanzarek Hotel in Stellenbach, which at the time was rated one of the top 300 hotels in the whole world. In charge of the restaurant was Cordon Bleu chef and food and wine critic Michelle Olafi, who was astonished by the effortless culinary skills of Maggie Pepler, saying... Food seemed to come out of the tips of her fingers with consummate ease. And as for her malva pudding, I've never come across anything like it. And I couldn't agree more, so now that we have that dry introduction, let's get our wet ingredients together, starting with one tablespoon of melted butter, one large egg, one cup of whole milk, don't skimp here, this really isn't the skimping kind of recipe, now, Maggie's original recipe called for one tablespoon of apricot jam, but I really like apricots, so I'm going to be using two heaping tablespoons here. I find that really gets the flavor jamming. At this point, we're also going to add one full tablespoon of white vinegar. Now, I've seen a lot of recipes using malt vinegar and dark vinegar. That's not necessary. The vinegar is not here as a flavor component. It's here as a chemistry component. You may have noticed that we use quite a lot of baking soda for the amount of flour we have. Well, the reason for that is the baking soda is actually going to aid in browning. So the vinegar is actually going to help us not only counteract some of the bitterness from that extra baking soda, but also give us a nice extra punch for the leavening. But once we combine our dry and wet ingredients, the clock is ticking. So before we do that, we want to go ahead and grease an 8x8 baking dish. You see, because of the baking soda and vinegar, this batter is going to have a real tendency to bubble up, which is normally a good thing, except if you overwork it and you have too many bubbles, when you bake it, you're going to have a bit of a problem. You see, what winds up happening is all the bubbles get pushed to the middle and they form a kind of premature crust, which can result in your malva having a kind of sunken middle, which is not the end of the world. It'll still be delicious, but we can avoid that simply by not overmixing. So let's go ahead and pour our pre-mixed wet into our pre-mixed dry and just get those combined without mixing too aggressively. Once we're happy with that, we just want to pour this out into our pre-greased baking dish. And other than the extra tablespoon of apricot, here's a second small change I'm making to Maggie's recipes. She suggested covering this in some greased tin foil, but I like a little extra browning and caramelization on mine, so I'm actually going to leave this uncovered as we whisk it off to a preheated 350 degree oven where it's going to bake for 45 minutes. Once there's about 5 minutes left in baking, it's time to make the sweet cream syrup for this. And this is what makes malva pudding malva pudding. We need one half cup of butter here, along with one cup of sugar, one half a cup of cream, one half cup of milk, and one half a cup of water. And nothing fancy here. We just want to bring this up to a simmer until the butter is melted and all of that sugar is dissolved. Once it is, we simply want to pour this over our baked malva pudding. And it does look like a lot of liquid, but trust me, it will absorb all of this. So don't be shy. Just keep pouring it around and watch the magic as it just draws all of that wonderful sweet cream syrup down into the sponge. I like to give that about five minutes to finish soaking in, and it turns out that's the perfect amount of time to make some easy homemade custard. And when I say easy, I mean easy. All we need here is two cups of milk, along with about a teaspoon of vanilla, and as that comes up to a simmer, we're going to whisk together here about two eggs, a third of a cup of sugar, and two tablespoons of cornstarch. For anyone keeping track, that's one egg and one tablespoon of cornstarch per cup of milk here. 
We just want to whisk this together until smooth and then set aside until our milk is almost ready to come up to a simmer. Once we see those telltale little wisps of steam and bubbles, we need to cut the heat down as low as it'll go and we're going to go ahead and temper our eggs. If we just dump the eggs into the milk, we risk curdling them, but by bringing the heat up slowly by dumping in a couple of spoonfuls and then whisking, we avoid that completely. I guess you could say that's the secret to having an excellent custard. Anyway, after four or five spoonfuls, our eggs should be hot enough that we can dump them into the milk. And you definitely want to mix at this point. Don't uh, let them sit there as you frantically try and change camera angles or anything stupid like that. After just two or three minutes, this should thicken up beautifully and our custard is ready to serve over our beautifully hot Malva pudding. Honestly, this is a dish that I had never had while I was actually living in South Africa, but it is so shockingly good that I'm going to be making this on the regular from now on. I definitely recommend serving this hot, and if you don't like custard, it also pairs excellently with a little bit of thin cream or ice cream. One of my favorite things about this are the contrasting textures. You get this wonderful, soft, pillowy interior, and you get a little bit of chewy caramelization along the outside. I'm not normally a big fan of bread pudding, but this thing really is amazing, so I highly recommend you give this a try. And a special thanks to Corinne in South Africa for introducing me to Malva Pudding. I really hope you've enjoyed today's episode of Passion for Food. If you have, give me a thumbs up below and don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell so you don't miss our future recipes. And check out one of our other great videos playing on the screen now. This has been Graham with Passion for Food. Oh, you're still here. You're supposed to be making this Malva pudding recipe. Go! Go!